so far, you've seen how to use the HFSS Antenna Toolkit to automatically generate a PIFA antenna. In this part, we'll place the antenna within a side view mirror of a car, adjust its location, and tune it. Later in our workflow, we'll turn this assembly into a 3D component. Here's a virtual prototype of a car's side view mirror in HFSS. Various objects make up the model, the mirror body, the interior part of the mirror, and the mirror itself. Different materials are assigned, copper to the internal structure and polyethylene to the mirror body. The substrate of the mirror is assigned glass. To model the reflective coating of the metal on the back side of the mirror, i.e. the mirror itself, a finite conductivity boundary is assigned with the material silver. Optionally, use aluminum. If the mirror design came with a series of coatings, use the layered impedance boundary in HFSS. In preparation for placing the antenna, we'll create a relative coordinate system. We'll hide all the objects except side mirror internal. We'll place the antenna behind this object. Press the Control and Alt keys and drag the mouse to rotate the model to adjust its view. Make sure you have these snaps active. We'll create a relative coordinate system offset, which will reference the coordinate system currently active. In this case, the global coordinate system. From the modeler menu, go to the coordinate system, create relative coordinate system, offset. Select relative from the drop down menu of the toolbar at the bottom. I'll move the cursor along an edge of the mirror and snap to the edge quadrant as shown. The relative coordinate system appears at this location and is active. We can now place the antenna. So let's open the PIFA antenna model. Press Ctrl A to select the entire model. Copy this model. Go back to the mirror assembly and paste this antenna. It's very easy to flip the antenna and place it along the YZ plane. Select all the objects of the antenna from the model tree as shown. Press the rotate command and rotate along the Y axis by 90 degrees. The antenna's perfect E boundaries and lump ports are retained in the mirror assembly. The modeler in HFSS is very flexible, so you can modify the relative coordinate system as you wish. All the objects created in this coordinate system will move when you modify the relative coordinate system. For instance, if you vary the location of the relative coordinate system, it also affects the antenna. According to the mechanical specifications of the mirror design, the coordinates of the suitable antenna location should be set to these values. The design passes the validation check, so now we can run a simulation. The adapt frequency is 2.4 GHz. Right-click Setup under Analysis and select Analyze to run a simulation. Once the simulation completes, view the results. As expected, the mirror assembly affects the radiation pattern of the antenna. You can also modify the design and run the simulations to see the influence of the individual objects on the pattern. These plots show the patterns due to the metals, mirror body, as well as the full assembly. The pattern due to the full assembly is comparable with that due to the presence of copper and silver. They are quite similar. Clearly, copper and silver have a greater impact on the radiation pattern than the plastic polyethylene assigned to the mirror body. Placing the antenna in the assembly will detune the antenna. In the return loss report, you can see the resonant frequency has shifted from 2.43 GHz of the standalone antenna to almost 2.6 GHz in the assembly. There are many ways to tune an antenna in HFSS. We'll define an optimization setup and a parametric setup. Since the antenna is parameterized, we can easily use the variables for tuning. Right-click the design and select Design Properties in the shortcut menu to bring up the Local Variables dialog. Select Optimization slash Design of Experiments. Include Length 1 as an optimization variable. Click OK. First, we'll define an optimetric setup. We'll use the quasi-Newton optimizer and define S11 as our cost function. Press Setup Calculations and specify S11 as the cost function. Make sure you have the right frequency sweep under Calc Solution. We'll set the calculation range to our resonant frequency of interest, which is 2.4 GHz. From the drop-down menu, select Edit. 
click the ellipses and activate the Select Value option. From this list, pick 2.4 GHz. From the S-parameter plot of our standalone antenna model, we know the minimum value of the cost function, i.e. S11 is almost minus 25 dB. So we can define the condition to be less than or equal to a numerical value of, say, minus 15 dB. Our goal is to minimize our cost function at 2.4 GHz. The optimizer automatically modifies the values of variable length 1 until the cost function is less than or equal to minus 15 dB. If you set the condition to be a minimum, HFSS automatically calculates the minimum value to reach. During the optimization analysis, in this case, since we know the nominal value, you can set a small range for your optimization variable as shown here. Right-click the optimization setup and select Analyze to start the optimization analysis. After the analysis is complete, open the S-parameter plot. You can see the antenna is tuned and resonant at 2.4 GHz. Select the design to see the optimal value of length 1. You can also define a parametric setup to tune the antenna. Select the desired variable. We'll define a linear step starting from 2.2 cm to 3 cm with a step size of 0.05 cm. Press Add and click OK to set this sweep definition. The table lists the values of the variable for which HFSS solves the parametric sweep. Right click Parametric Setup and select Analyze from the shortcut menu. We'll now create a rectangular plot. Bring up the Reports dialog. On the Families tab, ensure all the lengths are selected. Press New Report. Here are the S11 curves at the different values of the antenna parameter length 1. Select the curves and add minimum markers for all of them at once. Click the marker table. When you place the mouse anywhere on the curve info legend, the corresponding cell in the marker table gets highlighted. In this manner, we can easily obtain the length at which the antenna is resonant at our frequency of interest, 2.4 GHz. Clearly, it is advantageous to work with a design that is parameterized. Of course, in this case, the parameterized antenna is traceable to the toolkit itself, wherefrom we automatically generate the antenna. In the next part, we'll quickly turn the assembly to a 3D component.